In this theme of innovation, we've looked at three levels of innovation, new to the world, new to the market, new to the firm, new to us. Value innovation, so we've anchored it to buyer value, to market value for the innovation, not just technical innovation. And now a different type of innovation, business model innovation. So the changing substantially the way we do business. Let's see what that means. Now, in this program, we are looking at the momentum growth model using DIG, okay? discovery, innovation, growth. Remember, we had these twin engines of growth, design and execution. First, we need to understand compelling insights. What really drives the thinking? What are the deep motivations of our customers and stakeholders? Because emotions are important, social components of our lives are important in deciding and in helping make decisions that are otherwise rational or that have a rational component. We can understand where is compelling value if we have deep motivations, what is important to our customers, whether these customers can provide profits, strong profits for us, high profits, and then we put that all into a design which is substantially more than just a functional physical product. These social, emotional contexts. So a product plus, plus, plus. Then we go to execute. We take the offer to market. We generate vibrant satisfaction. Our customers are happy because we've done exactly what they want. And in particular, we've dealt with deep issues in their lives through our products and through our technologies and through our innovation. They come back because... Love it, we keep on offering excellent value and innovating on an ongoing basis. Therefore, they recommend our offering our products to others. They become positive ambassadors. And we have to continue that engagement with vibrant engagement, communication, interaction as much as possible to help perpetuate that cycle and create momentum so it can grow and feed upon itself. That's the model. In the design component, we are aiming for compelling outcomes. We have to be open to different realities. As we've said, this comes in the discovery, making sure that it's not just the way our way of thinking that goes into the offer, but that of the consumer, the potential buyer. Remember, let's look at BMW. They were the first to include the iPod. This comes from compelling insights. The ultimate driving machine, isn't that lovely? Someone who buys a BMW or who buys a Ferrari isn't just buying a transport machine. They are having an experience, a status. You know, there are psychological elements that are very important. So we are offering important value and they're part of a community that is important to them. Because these are very high net worth customers, they, typically they will purchase again they can bring much more profitability, each individual customer, much more profitability than the purchaser of a Ford or a General Motors car who is much more focused on price than other elements of the offer. And it needs to be an ongoing effort. Use your staff and stakeholders as much as possible to provide context for important and continuous improvement. You're not going to get it right the first time. It's okay. You learn and come back. Keep a design thinking process in mind. Put the product out, get feedback, get another prototype and keep on redesigning until it's perfect but you never get perfection because I said you need to keep on innovating. If you don't, somebody else will and you lose your market. Apple had done it, they've lost their momentum and they've come back. Very interesting is the fact that these customers that tend to buy Apple products like innovation. So they like things to be changing and to be improving substantially. They can be difficult to retain unless you continue to keep them satisfied. Vibrant satisfaction. And you have vibrant engagement by interacting with them, 
they become strong advocates, and they are strong advocates for the products. It remains important to be externally focused, bringing all these elements together that we've just been talking about. The moment you start thinking about how you, I, know best or know what the market wants, that is the moment that you're likely to lose touch of their reality. So, cooperative, interactive, iterative, that's consistent with the design thinking approach, and important, functional and emotional and social, and whatever else is important to the customer. Self-actualization, for example. If you want to go back to the, the Maslow hierarchy of wants. We've talked about BMW and Ferrari being strong advocates, Ferrari having very strong communities and having lots of strong advocates. Ferrari in particular, not only the drivers, the people who buy them, but people who go to the uh, Formula One races, those strong people who buy the T-shirts. There's a strong community who like to be associated with the brand, with the feeling. And how's about this? Wouldn't it be beautiful to have rock stars out there uh, promoting your product? Well, we've had this uh, case in uh, this report in the Wall Street Journal where rap music rock stars ditch dollars for the cash app mobile payment system. So this is another example of fintech that I've discussed earlier. We can become disaffected with banks. Sometimes we just deal with them because we have no other option. And in some countries, there have been some examples of very poor behavior with banks. So people stay with them only because they have no other option. And in this case, um, with the Cash App, you've got certainly satisfied customers, strong retention, and what a fantastic advocate to have your product mentioned in songs. Absolutely fantastic. And, and, and these are sort of testimonials or you know, important ways of showing that there is a strong engagement. So, you know, why are rappers giving away you know, endorsements for this product? Beautiful for them, if they can get it. Let's see. Now, I'm putting the cursor on this line. According to the paper, some 100 songs on Spotify refer to Cash App. Um, doesn't get any better than that. Now let's have a look at how the design and execution were implemented at Skype. A brilliant example of um, success at an international level in the marketplace. So, what were the compelling insights, value, equity, and the power offer? Compelling insights? So, they were able to extend internet chat to live audio and live video. I can remember doing internet chat, it was all text in the early days. Big improvements through the audio and the live. And you can have one device. The customers were internet literate, so you could leverage these, their capability. What's the compelling value for them? Oh, cheap, certainly very cheap. It was free and reliable. Reliable communication over the internet. Fantastic. The equity from the company side or well, opportunities of cross-selling, network effects, word of mouth. The word of mouth because people start talking about how good this service is. And you get networking effects where you have a communication options. So the, the, the communication service device becomes more valuable as more people are, are on the, the network. So there's also an incentive for the consumers to go out and promote the product, the service. The power off of was, well, effectively the whole world can talk for free. That's on the design side. Let's have a look at the execution. Vibrant satisfaction, certainly simple to install and use, fun, you can use it even with a cheap headset. You can stick it up to the telecoms. Uh, I've talked about financial institutions being at risk of disruption, certainly it's the case with telecommunications companies, big monopoly companies. They can lose sight of their customers. And if we have an opportunity to get away, we love the freedom. Let's see, vibrant retention. 
So we're looking at heavy users of broadband. It's easy once it's installed, so use it a lot. And you can use it for incoming as well as outcoming calls. Vibrant engagement, yes. There is a strong desire for promoting it. Remember, when there's a network effects, and communication is a very important one, important case of this, there's an incentive even for the consumers to go out and promote it. By October 2004, they already had 1 million users. Then it was sold to eBay, and they had further strong growth. However, did not so work so well for eBay. They sold to Microsoft. Who knows? It's, it's important also to have the right connection, the right synergies between products and the portfolio in the business. So let's put that back into the diagram, the general diagram. You can see the various elements. What's the insight? From written chat to audio and video, reliable low cost comms, freedom, sharing, value for the business, many users, the network effect, and cross selling. And you start looking at other products. And the offer is the whole world can talk for free. So in this case, what? Drives emotions, beating the telecoms, the fun, is a good quality of communication. And you can do similar analyses with something like WhatsApp, for example. What drives the action? You can connect to your network, you can have calls from contacts, and who uses it? People who are heavy PC users, heavy IT literature. And what drives the advocacy? Remember, that's the uh, vibrant engagement. What is Trendy Club to join? And you can share the free use. And the offer was the whole world can talk for free. In the execution, it was enjoyable, low cost audio and video comms for internet users. And in fact, there was very strong advocacy, and there remains very strong advocacy for these types of services.